I'm going to show you how to quickly make an animated GIF like the one you can see here in Photoshop because GIFs are, despite the fact they came up years and years and years ago, all the rage these days and people want to make them. They're a great way to raise brand awareness. And Photoshop's been able to do this for a very long time. What I'm going to do here is just stop this one from playing. Okay, and I'll turn off the layers that I've got here. I'm basically going to select uh, the image that I have in the background here and create a new document, okay, based on that and paste that down like so. So there's my cat. Now, for the eyes here, I'd need to make a selection and that's easily done with the object selection tool. So I can go ahead and pick that up from the toolbox and I'm going to drag over the eye like so and let it evaluate that and see what it returns for me. So there you are, that's pretty good actually. I think I could uh, deal with that. Maybe just go and mask that a bit later on, but I'm gonna hold down the shift key here and pick up the other eye like so. Do you know what I am? I'm just gonna pop into select and mask and use refine edge here to just get rid of this bit just here, perfect. Nice and quick and easy. And of course, because it's for a GIF, it doesn't have to stick to the same criteria that it might do for something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually save that selection because it might be useful later on. Okay, and then I'm going to create a new layer. So on my new layer, I'm going to choose a foreground color and I'd like sort of a nice uh, green here for my lasers. So I'll choose this really, really bright, violent green. It doesn't matter about all the warnings because it's not going to be printed. And then just gonna hold down Alt or Option and Backspace to fill that on the layer like so. Okay, I can now deselect that. And if I turn the layer off and on, you can see it's there. And what I'm going to do here is reduce the opacity of this one down to 10%. And I'll call this layer 10. Then I'm going to duplicate that, so Command J, like so. I'll call this one 20. See if you can guess where I'm going with this one. In fact, I'm gonna do all the duplicates first. So I'll just do three, four, five, like so. So 30, just there, and 40, just there, and 50, just there. And these are all gonna add up nicely when this is going on. So I'll go to this layer here, change this one to 20. Go to this one here, 30. This one here, 40, and this one here, 50, like so. So the varying opacity there, I can turn all of these off if I want to. I'm just going to duplicate apart from the, maybe the one at the bottom or maybe even that as well. I'll just duplicate this layer here. So I'm gonna call this 50 glow, like so. Okay, and then add a layer style to this. So I'm gonna go for an outer glow. And again, I'm gonna choose sort of a green color like so. Okay, and then make that nice and big on the outside just there and bring the opacity up just a little bit. Okay, that should be just fine the way it is. Let's just preview that if I turn that layer on. Oh, excellent. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new blank layer above that one. And I'm going to get my pen tool. So P for the pen tool. I'm going to zoom out slightly as well. Okay, and I'm going to make sure here that I'm drawing paths, which I am. Okay, and then I'm just going to click in a few places here like this. Okay, to kind of get that shape there. I'm just going to tap A on my keyboard temporarily and just move this point. Whoops a daisy. If I just get that actual point, move that one down like so, then I'm gonna get my pen tool again and add a similar thing just here. So I'm just visualizing uh, laser beams there again. I'm just gonna tune that corner there. Okay, like so, nice and easy. Then I'm going to get these paths and turn them into a selection. I could have actually done that with the pen tool directly from there, but I'll just do make selection here with a feather radius of zero. Now that's gone the wrong way around, so I'm just going to invert that. Shift Command I, Shift Control I. And on this blank layer, fill that with green as well. 
Okay, I can deselect that now, and I'm going to duplicate that a few times. So Command J, Command J, Command J, just there. That should be enough. I'm then going to go to the first one of these layers. Okay, I'm going to go to the filter menu, come down to distort, and choose wave. Okay, and just do a few things in here to just mess this around a little bit. So I'm just going to shorten the wavelength just there. The number of generators, I'm going to drop that down to four, like so. And you can get a preview. They could do with updating this, really, uh, so that it could change. And I'll bring the scale down as well in both cases, just to get some nice variation around the size. That's just fine. So that works pretty well for that one. I'll go ahead and make this one active and then change the filter just slightly. So hold down the Alt or Option key and choose it from the top here. Okay, so I think maybe just pop the amplitude up just a little bit here. Bring those scales down. I think that'll do fine. It only needs to be a slight variation between each one. And of course, we're doing this very, very quickly. Okay, so that one as well, I think that'll be fine as it is. And this last one also, I'll hold down the option key this time because I don't think I did last time. Oops, and I didn't do that time either. So I'll just undo and do that. That step is all important because it's the one that allows you to uh, edit the effect, of course. Hit OK. Wow, that's just crazy. In fact, that's too crazy. So let's do that again. This time with feeling. Okay, I wasn't really looking at the preview because it's too small. But there we are. Okay, so let's just go with that. I think that's fine. Okay, excellent. So how do you build the GIF? Well, it's here in the timeline panel, which you get from the window menu. If you don't see it already, choose Create Frame Animation. And then all you need to do, okay, is add a new frame each time, okay, and then turn on the layers that you want in that frame. So here, for example, the eyes are gonna get a little bit greener and I'll add another layer and then I'm gonna turn on my 20 layer there. Okay, and of course they're adding up because they're both on top of each other. I'll add another layer and by that I mean frame and turn on that layer, add another one like so and just carry on working through. And so the cat's built up enough energy in its eyes now to be ready to fire the beams. So the glow is on. Add yet another one here. Turn on that layer. Now, this is where I need to kind of vary what's going on, right? Because I need to turn that layer off and this layer on. Okay, and add another frame. I'll turn that one off and this layer on. Actually, are they different enough, those two? They're not, actually because the filter ran the same way. So I'll use this one just here and turn this one off and then add this one and I'll just go back to the middle one here. Now ready to test that out. So I'll hit the play icon just here. Nice. Okay, and there's stuff coming out just there. And of course you could play with that as much as you want. Here are the looping options. I've set that to forever and to export that and actually make your GIF, you go file, export, save for web legacy. You've got to choose GIF in here. Choose your color palette. The smaller the colors you have, then the more efficient it will be. So I'm gonna choose 32 uh, no dither there. And let me just try 32 dithered. Okay, that background, I think that looks fine because the main area is going to be the cat. Uh, you can see the options here for animation. And then you just simply hit save, choose your location and you're done. So there you are. That's the quick way to make an animated GIF in Photoshop. Oh.